Hello, Breaks. <laughs> Back for round three uh, today, or in this third video, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, disc brake overhaul, or I'm sorry, caliper overhaul, um, which is not a common practice. Um, so me showing you this, some people would argue that that's an outdated uh, practice and that there's no reason to really talk about that. Here's the thing, I have worked in an industry or part of the industry that you may not have access to a brand new caliper. Um, and so sometimes you need to be able to make do with what you have. Uh, not to mention overhauling a caliper is very inexpensive compared to a brand new caliper. A brand new caliper, maybe 50, 80, over $100. As to where a caliper rebuild kit, maybe $10. Um, and so there's a couple of downfalls. If you rebuild the caliper, you will end up having a liability that falls onto you. And again, if anything doesn't work properly, that could be a problem. Now, uh, if you are doing this on your own vehicle, I'm rebuilding my caliper every single time. It's so much cheaper and it's really easy. You guys are gonna do this in lab. Uh, I will do a demo on how to do it. It's, it's a very easy process, just a couple of things you need to pay attention to. So I'm just gonna briefly cover it right now, um, the theory of it. Uh, I've got a couple of slides for that. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of good YouTube videos on it, so I wasn't really able to give you guys any of resources on that. However, I'm gonna do a nice demonstration for you when we get back into class. So not to worry at all, I'm just gonna cover of a couple of things. So we'll go to my screen share here. We'll go to caliper service. Here we go, hopefully y'all can see that. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, okay, so first things first, uh, you're gonna need a handful of parts. You're gonna need a shop air regulator. Uh, most shop air uh, or most shops will on average have uh, close to 200 PSI, 190 I think is what we have at the shop at school. Uh, you don't want any anywhere near that pressure. So you're going to want to regulate it to around 25, 30 PSI for stubborn pistons. You may need to go higher, um, but regulators are really the way to go because um, you can get really, uh, you can go ham and you don't want to on this. You're also going to need a wood block because we don't want to damage the piston if at all possible. Caliper rebuild kits don't come with a new piston in there. And so if you're really trying to do this to save money or to salvage most of the caliper, uh, you're going to want to make sure you do everything in your power to not damage that caliper piston. So you're going to need a wood block. As you can see in the pictures, you're going to use it uh, for, for when the, you're blowing the piston out. It has something soft to butt up against. Uh, you're also going to need a small pick or a pocket screwdriver. And that's pretty much it. Um, you're not going to use, if the book asks, you're not using sandpaper at all. Uh, we may use some emery cloth to clean up the piston if there's any surface rust. If there is any pitting whatsoever, the piston is trash. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, if you have an uneven sealing surface, you will end up with hydraulic leaks. So any, any pitting or scratches that you can feel with your fingernail, the, the piston's trash and you need to replace it. Um, <clears throat> this can be done using fluid pressure to pull the piston out. It's a lot cleaner and less messy if the piston, or I'm sorry, if the whole caliper is just sort of taken off the vehicle. I'll show you guys on a bench exactly how to do this. Uh, once you have, uh, so what you're gonna do is where the hydraulic line would go into the caliper, you're gonna disconnect that um, if you're doing this off the vehicle. Um, and that is where you're going to insert your air hose or air nozzle into. You're gonna put the wood block in front of the piston and you're just gonna sort of little spurts of air until the piston comes all the way out and butts up against that wood block. And then um, I usually take the wood block out. Once it's almost all the way out, I'll stuff some rags in there and just to get the piston to sort of pop all the way out. Um, once you've done that, you're gonna clean off the piston. Do not use anything at all besides brake clean and brake fluid for lubrication and cleaning. That is it. If you use anything else, you will contaminate uh, and we don't want that. So 
Once you do that, you have the piston out, you're going to inspect all around it if that's the ceiling surface. Sometimes the caliper housing is a ceiling surface, but most of the time your piston is a ceiling surface. There cannot be any pitting. If there's any minor uh, surface rust, anything like that, you can use emery cloth or like 1200 grit sandpaper. Like I said, if the book asks, you're not using sandpaper, uh, but you're gonna use a really, really, really fine sandpaper, even 2000, just to sort of clean it up a little bit. That's really it. If you have any phenolic pistons, it's a different type of material sometimes used, you cannot clean those up with anything. Um, if there's any damage at all, sur surface or anything, you, you need to replace the piston, but the steel pistons, um, or, or any of the metal pistons, you can clean up using emery cloth or really fine sandpaper, um, but not phenolic. So once you clean the piston all the way up, everything's all nice and good. You see that there is no real damage to the piston. You're gonna go ahead and use a pick and take out your square cut seal as well as your new dust boot because your rebuild kit's gonna come with a brand new dust boot and it's gonna come with a brand new square cut seal. So you're gonna go ahead and remove that. Um, if it is, if your caliper uh, is that the ceiling surface and not the piston, you can see here on the left picture, there's a little hone uh, you can use. Sometimes they have bead hones. Uh, this is a, a cylinder hone, a small cylinder hone that they're using. So what you'll go ahead and do is lubricate. I always recommend using a little bit of brake fluid to lubricate your new seal. Um, go ahead and just sort of very gently, again, we want to be very careful with that seal since it's going to keep fluid from coming out once everything's put back together. Um, I like to lubricate it using a little bit of brake fluid. I clean out the caliper housing with brake clean and then sort of put some brake fluid in there. This can be a little bit messy, so uh, you'll want to use gloves because you're going to get brake fluid and brake clean everywhere. And you're definitely going to want to use safety glasses because one of the most painful fluids to get in your eye is brake fluid. Uh, and then also brake clean is also quite painful. So um, ask me how I know how. <laughs> um, so in the picture on the right here, we've got the technician that is installing a new caliper seal. Um, once you go to put the piston back in, after the seal's already been put back in, um, you may need to put the dust boot on the piston at this time. Um, it really depends on the design. There is a special tool to insert the piston. You don't necessarily need one. I never had to use one. Uh, it is important that you get that piston perfectly straight in. If it's not perfectly straight and you try to shove it in, you will gall it and you'll, you'll damage the piston. So just make sure it's really straight and then just sort of squeeze it down, rocking it back and forth until it's partially in the bore. And then from there, it can't be crooked. Um, and then you just need to sort of using your hands should be no problem uh, of just sort of squeezing the piston back into its bore double check, make sure that your dust boot is sitting the way that it is uh, supposed to be sitting, and you're done. It's ready to go back on the vehicle. Obviously, you're gonna need to really bleed the vehicle because there's a whole bunch of air in the back of that piston after you're done rebuilding it. So again, I'm gonna do a whole demonstration on this when we get back into class for lab. Um, and like I said, it's a really easy process. So it's something that's good to know because you never know when you're gonna need to know how to do it. Also doing this on your own car is great. I do not, and I, I, I again, I wanna really emphasize this. I do not recommend doing this on a customer's vehicle unless you absolutely have to because you do uh, become liable for anything having to do with that caliper. If you buy a rebuilt caliper and something happens, whoever rebuilt it, the liability falls on them and you can sort of just, shove it along that way. So just keep that stuff in mind. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys um, for hanging in there. Uh, that is all the lecture that we have for this week. If you have any questions at all, uh, get us out of screen sharing here. If you have any questions at all about any of this process, uh, servicing, about brake pads, about rotors, um, whatever it may be, caliper overhaul, feel free to throw it in the discussion board. We can discuss it. Um, if, if you see a question before I do in the discussion board and you'd like to address it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and uh, I, I will definitely get back. I'll be checking this every single day. So um, as we go through this, this first week is gonna be pretty crazy, but we'll make it through. Uh, I just need you guys to communicate with me on stuff. Again, if you've got questions, ask them when you have them. 
Uh, hopefully these videos have been helpful to you and not a waste of your time. Let me know that feedback really would help. If you're feeling like, you know, I got the presentation, the lecture's not really necessary. Uh, I'd like that feedback as well because this is lots of extra time that I would need to do if you guys don't find it useful. But if you find it useful, I have no problem at all doing this for every single lecture. Um, so let me know how useful you found these videos, um, if they're useful at all or, or not at all. I am, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I do uh, just really appreciate any feedback at all. Again, we're all learning through this, including myself. So um, make sure you guys do your homework. Uh, one last thing I'd like to mention before I let you go is that the end of the module quiz can only be taken once. So once you started it, there's no going back. Um, make sure that you have a designated time and place where nobody's going to bother you during this module quiz. Um, also, do not attempt the quiz unless you've done all of the homework and you've studied. It's treated as if it's a test in class. You can't redo it. You can't stop halfway through the quiz and be like, oh, I'm going to come, come do this later. Not a good idea. The quizzes are not super long. Um, you can see exactly how many questions there will be. And uh, so if you have any questions before you take the quiz, ask them. Don't wait until they're like, oh, I screwed up the quiz. What do I do now? If you're not sure, if you're ready, if you have questions about things, don't take the quiz until you're ready. Uh, for this class, I do have it assigned, I believe, uh, on Wednesday because technically that would be the end of our week since this is a Monday, Wednesday class. Um, but I believe you have to have it done by the end of Thursday on midnight. Go ahead and double check the time, make sure I'm correct there. Um, and uh, like I said, you've got a 24 hour window period to take the module quiz. However, once you started it, you are limited to the amount of time I've allotted you. So just be wise with that. Uh, make sure that you guys are uh, taking that seriously pretend it's a quiz in class or a test in class. So again, any questions, uh, make sure you message me. But um, hopefully everything's going along smoothly for you guys at this point. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying. All right, see you later.